In this video, we deploy Windows 365. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Sereldo. So the wait is over. Windows 365 is now available. But before you go to the endpoint management portal and get started, there are a few things that need to be taken care of first. In this video, we go over those requirements and then walk through deploying Windows 365 for a user. Also stick around for tips that may save you a lot of time if you're getting started with Windows 365. Before that, please like and subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. If you'd like to learn more about Azure Virtual Desktop, please check out my course Zero to Hero with Azure Virtual Desktop on Udemy.com. The link is below. Back to it and we'll start with the requirements. Let's get the big one out of the way. The environment needs Windows AD domain services. Azure AD domain services won't do, and we'll get to why in a minute. Windows 365 requires Windows AD. I know this is going to be difficult for a lot of organizations, especially ones that want a modern authentication experience without the need for domain controllers. Microsoft has an Azure AD join option for Azure Virtual Desktop in preview, and I suspect things will change in the future. But if you want to get started with Windows 365 now, a Windows AD domain is required. Hybrid Azure AD join has to be enabled in the environment. Any cloud PC created in Windows 365 has to be hybrid Azure AD joined. If hybrid join is not enabled in your environment, or if you have filters in place for Azure AD Connect, make sure that the OU for Windows 365 clients is included for hybrid join. The Azure AD hybrid join requirement is why Azure AD domain services won't work. Azure AD Connect won't work with Azure AD domain services and therefore clients in Azure AD domain services can't be hybrid joined. Next, you'll need a VNet and subnet with connectivity to the domain controller. This includes setting DNS to point to the domain controller. The client computers are domain joined and that can't happen without connectivity to a domain controller. Also, keep in mind that Windows 365 has a limited region support, so the VNet has to be in one of the supported regions. Check out the link in the comments below for the supported regions. Windows 365 needs an account to join the clients to the domain. You could use an admin account, but that's probably not a good idea, especially for production environments. A better option is to create a domain join account and limit it to adding computers to the domain with the delegation of authority wizard. You can specify an organizational unit or OU for the Windows 365 computer objects. It's not required, but it may be a good idea to keep objects organized in Windows AD. If you do specify an OU, make sure that it's in the scope for Azure AD Connect synchronization and hybrid join, and the domain join account can add computers to the OU. The account used to manage Windows 365 has to be a member of the Intune administrator role in Azure AD. You'll also need a group of users to get access to Windows 365. You can't assign access to an individual user, only a group. Here's a tip before you move forward. Once all the prerequisites are in place, deploy a Windows client to the same subnet that you're using for Windows 365. Log in and join a computer to the domain with the domain join account. If that works, make sure the new VM is hybrid Azure AD joined. You may need to move the computer object to the Windows 365 OU if you have one after adding it to the domain. If there are any issues, for example, if the client won't join the domain or hybrid join doesn't work, fix these issues before moving on to Windows 365. Doing these steps manually helps validate the environment is ready for Windows 365. Troubleshooting each of these steps is easier than troubleshooting issues in Windows 365. If any of these steps fail, so will the Windows 365 deployment. Fix the issues before moving forward. We're almost there, I promise. Let's go over licensing next. And honestly, I'm still trying to get a better understanding of the licensing requirement. Based on the Microsoft documentation, the administrator needs an Intune license to manage devices. Intune supports unlicensed admin access after the 2006 release. If you run into trouble, try giving the admin an Intune license. The client needs a Windows license, Intune and Azure AD has to be configured. These are often bundled together. Make sure whatever licensing bundle you may have supports these licenses. And of course you need a Windows 365 license. At the time of recording, a 60 day trial is available. Let's move on to the demo next. For this demo, we're going to create an on-premises network connection, a provisioning policy, and then give a user a license and test. 
Before we start, make sure you have all the requirements previously outlined in place and tested by manually adding a client to the domain. Let's get started in the Microsoft Endpoint Management Portal. I'm jumping in before we move on because I learned something after I recorded this video. There are two versions of Windows 365. There's Windows 365 Business and Windows 365 Enterprise. This video applies to the Enterprise version of Windows 365. The management task we're going over in this video won't apply to Windows 365 Business. Okay, let's move on. Here we are at the Endpoint Management Portal located at endpoint.microsoft.com. From here, go to Devices and Windows 365. If you don't see what's on my screen, make sure you have the licenses added to your organization and try adding an Intune license to the account you're using to manage Windows 365. Let's start with On-Premise Network Connections or OPNC as it's referred to in the documentation. Honestly, this is a little misleading. The connection doesn't need to be to your on-premises network. It needs to connect to your Windows AD domain services environment. That could be on-premises or hosted in Azure. I already have a connection here I used for testing. We'll create a new one. And as stated before, make sure you've configured a VNet with access to a domain controller beforehand. It's a good idea to deploy a Windows client to the VNet and verify it can join the domain. Go to create a connection. Give it a name. This one we'll call East US. Select your subscription. And create a new resource group. This is used for the virtual NIC that connects your Microsoft hosted virtual PCs to your network. The VMs are hosted on behalf of Microsoft outside of your tenant. This NIC allows the Windows 365 VMs to connect to the VNet. For this example, we'll use the name W365 East US RG. Select the virtual network and the subnet. If you don't see the virtual network, make sure it was deployed to the supported region. Move on to AD domain. Enter the DNS domain name for your Windows AD domain. Optionally, you can specify an organizational unit. Supply the UPN and password for the account that will join the Windows 365 clients to the domain. Click Next. In Review and Create, notice that the Windows 365 service is granted reader permissions on the subscription and network contributor permissions on the resource group specified and the virtual network. Click Review and Create to create the connection. This will take a few minutes to configure. During the configuration, it creates a disabled computer object in Windows AD and tests to verify that that object is Azure AD Hybrid joined. If you have multiple domain controllers, it can take some time for the computer object to replicate to the domain controller used by Azure AD Connect. Once it's replicated, Azure AD Connect has to sync that new computer object to Azure AD. Azure AD Connect replication happens every 30 minutes by default. If the object isn't in Azure AD by the time the status check finishes, you'll see a warning like this. Make sure the object is replicated in Windows AD and run a sync process in Azure AD Connect. You should see the object in Azure AD as hybrid joined under the devices like this. If you get a warning, make sure Windows AD replication and synchronization takes place and run the check again. Windows 365 will continuously run through these tests to make sure everything is working properly. Leave the computer object in place for the life of the connection. I'll pause here until this finishes. The connector is finished and the status is successful. I would like to point out though, I did have to go through and force Windows AD replication and then do a synchronization for Azure AD Connect in order to get this to pass the check. 
if we go into the connector. I had a warning at the Azure AD device sync. If I would have given it enough time, it would have replicated and synchronized on its own. To speed things up, I forced it manually. If we go into Windows AD, here's a list of the computer objects. And the one that was created for this connector is the one with the V6H in the name. And I know that because I track these as I set up other connectors. So I know that's the new one that was created. Let's go to Devices in Azure AD. This shows the computer object and that it's hybrid Azure AD joined. So that's great. We've got the connector working. Let's create a provisioning policy next. We'll go back to the endpoint management portal. Be sure you have the group with your users in place. A user can only be assigned one provisioning policy. If they're assigned more than one, the first one takes effect. Go to provisioning policies. This shows I already have one in place. For this example, I'll create a second one. So we'll create a policy, give it a name. The name for this example is W365 East. You can give it a description too. For the on-premises network connection, select the connection we just created, East US in this example. If your connection doesn't show up, it could be that it wasn't successful with its check. Go back and verify that it was able to complete without any errors or warnings. We'll go to next. This brings us to the images and we'll select a gallery image. We'll select the image we want to apply, Windows 10 Enterprise 21H1 for this example. Next, we'll go to assignments. We'll select a group. For this example, there's a W365 East group that has my users in it. So we'll select that, go to next. If it all looks good, we'll hit create. Now that we have our provisioning policy, let's go over to all cloud PCs. I have one that I set up previously. I remove the license from the user. Once the license is removed, the user will have access to that cloud PC for seven days. After that, the cloud PC is deleted and no longer accessible. If you need to stop somebody from accessing the cloud PC, you have to disable their account. As of right now, there's no way for me to delete this PC or the provisioning policy it's attached to. But let's keep going on our example. We have the provisioning policy and the on-premises network connection, but no PCs are being provisioned. For that, let's go over to licensing. Here's the products I have licensed, and I did get a trial of the Windows 365 Enterprise. That's what we're looking at here. Unfortunately, there's only one. That's why I had to remove it from that other user. Anyway, let's assign that to a second user. We'll add a user. I'll add one of my test user accounts and select. We'll go to review and assign and assign. The license has been assigned to the user. Make sure that the users also have a location assigned before you assign a license. Let's go back to the endpoint management portal. When the licensing change is synchronized, this will prompt the Windows 365 service to provision a cloud PC for that user. It did take a few minutes, but that license change is now replicated and Windows 365 is provisioning that user a new PC. The user won't be able to log into their cloud PC until provisioning is finished. In the test that I've done, it's taken over an hour to provision that PC. As part of the provisioning process, it's creating an object in Windows AD that is then hybrid joined to Azure AD. So it is still dependent on all of the replication with Windows AD and synchronization with Azure AD Connect before it's fully provisioned. I'll pause here until it's ready to go. And we're back. That took just under an hour and now our cloud PC is provisioned. Let's sign in by opening a private browser and going to cloudpc.microsoft.com. Here we are logged in as test one user one. That's the user that was assigned the license. The user is prompted with some information about the cloud PC on Windows 365. 
We'll go next to go through this and get started. And we've got another next, more information for the end users. And we got it. The main page gives you details about the cloud PC and under settings, there's an option to restart, rename, and troubleshoot. Let's open it in the browser. I have MFA enabled on this account, so I have to approve the sign in. And for now, we'll allow this. Here, I'll authenticate to the Windows domain. I suspect somebody will ask about double logins, and I don't have an answer right now if that's going away or there's a configuration setting that will take care of it. More on that as we move along in understanding the product. The first login normally takes a little bit longer to prepare Windows with the user profile. While we're waiting, I will point out that the remote desktop app used for Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows Virtual Desktop will work as well. That will provide more display settings, including using multiple monitors. And here we are, we're logged in. And for a second there, the resolution didn't look too good, but it's improving. That's it, we're now signed in to our cloud PC. Let's just go back to the other window. And if we look at download remote desktop, there are the options to download additional clients other than the web client to use for a remote desktop. That is how to configure Windows 365. This video is a starting point to better understand the process. There will be more information to come. Don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications of new content, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.